Good Monday morning. I'm Otis Corbett, and I'm coming to you on Facebook this morning so that we can all start off this week the right way with Scripture and prayer. Our Scriptures for today come from Philippians chapter 3, verse 17 to chapter 4, verse 1. This passage reads, Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of His glory, by the power that also enables Him to make all things subject to Himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. So let's talk today about heavenly citizenship. If you're someone like me who needs to keep up with trends in the evangelical world, you might have come across a heated discussion that is currently taking place about the subject of Christian nationalism. This is the idea that some pastors and church members have conflated their Christian identity with their patriotic identity. In other words, they have confused their U.S. citizenship with their position in the kingdom of God. Now, it's a hot topic, and bottom line up front, I will not be resolving that argument today. What I do want to do is to consider what Paul had to say to the church at Philippi about our heavenly citizenship. Paul, of course, was a Roman citizen, and he was not shy about claiming the benefits of being a citizen of that empire when it benefited his ministry and the spreading of the gospel. At the same time, he did not wear his Roman citizenship on his sleeve. Now, this could be because at the time Paul lived in the Roman Empire, it had largely abandoned the democratic system which had caused it to prosper. And in addition, uh, Roman democracy was limited to the elites of society in any case, and one might be able to admire the Roman Empire for its many achievements, but sadly, championing liberty and freedom for all people is not one of those achievements. Paul was somewhat more bold in claiming that he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was a Jew and a member of that nation also, and he wasn't ashamed of it. He was glad to remind doubters of his Jewish heritage and to claim every benefit he could from that relationship also. Of course, the Jewish nation as a whole, as well as the divided kingdoms of Israel and Judah, had turned their back on God, and they were punished for their faithlessness and rebellion. So Paul was a member of two great nations, Rome and Israel but his primary loyalty was to neither. He much preferred the kingdom of heaven to other earthly sovereigns. He knew that all things on this orb are limited and frail and imperfect, and they pale in comparison to the things of heaven. He knew that human sovereignty is limited and frail and imperfect, and it also pales in comparison to the Lord of heaven and of earth. He knew that the righteousness of people Nations and kings are as filthy rags as compared to the righteousness of God. He knew which kingdom should claim his ultimate loyalty and which kingdom had the power to transform his life. And if the answer isn't apparent by now, it wasn't either Rome or Israel. So if Paul was an American citizen today, he'd be a good citizen and a good neighbor. He would not be ashamed of his citizenship, and he would take every advantage of it as he preached the gospel. He would recognize that the United States is a nation that has done many good things and also made some big mistakes. He'd know that we've corrected many of our historical mistakes while, because we are human, we continue to make others. He'd recognize also that the greatest benefit of our political liberty and the freedoms that we enjoy is not so that we can make money or enjoy recreation or even live how and where we want. No, 
He'd see that the greatest benefit of our nation is that we are free to choose a higher loyalty, loyalty to the cross of Christ and our Lord's redeeming and transforming power in our lives. In preferring the realm of heaven to any earthly sovereign, Paul was merely agreeing with Jesus who taught us in Mark 8.36, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? How can we argue with him about that? Each week we want to pray for a different church, so this week please pray for Sweetwater Baptist Church and Pastor Bobby Morgan. And also please pray for the churches without pastors and um, particularly our bivocational churches because it's very hard for them to have a pastor these days and uh, we just need the Lord to call out some more people to serve those churches. Please also pray for the believers in Ukraine and all of Central and Eastern Europe. It's a very, very crucial time in that part of the world. Nobody really knows what's going to happen next. So pray for their safety and for their efforts to spread the gospel during this conflict. Pray for peace and the opportunity to share the gospel in Russia again and that all the countries in Central and Eastern Europe would also have that blessing as well. So pray also that those who are called will answer. Pray for our churches because they need to think about Vacation Bible School this summer. Pray that our churches that didn't have a school last year will be able to have one this year because so many children come to know the Lord during that time and their parents can be ministered to as well. So pray for Vacation Bible School. Also, pray for spring break because that season is in full force now. Pray for safety for those students taking trips and vacations, and pray also for the volunteer mission teams that are going out over spring break. Pray that they'll stay safe and healthy, and also pray that they would be effective in sharing the gospel. Pray for those going out on mission during spring break. And finally and urgently, urgently please pray for more volunteers to answer God's call to serve at our Christian service centers and particularly our op center. We, we, we just have had a lot of volunteers that have aged out. They're unable to serve now and we need more help. We need to be able to process donations. We need to keep the thrift store operating so that we can fund our food distribution ministry, our counseling ministry and other things that the, that, that thrift store supports. Also, we have an immediate opening for a manager for the Op Center, and that's an employee. So if, uh, if a member of one of our churches is interested in a full-time job that also helps people, call Leroy Cole at 222-3840. This is an immediate and urgent need, so pray with us that God will lead the right person to us for that job. Now, may God give you a good week, and may you feel His blessings every day. Pray with me. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord to make His face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. I hope you all have a good Monday morning and a great week to come. See you again next week.